Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 Film Channel. Today I'm going to talk to you very quickly about what the fastest way of producing concrete encasement for columns actually is in the absence of using something like Dynamo, okay? Um, and we're not going to dilly-dally too much. Listen, it's going to get straight into this. So if you actually look on screen here again, we have the light industrial structural model that I previously produced for a different tutorial. And again, this is available from the first link down below, free to all of the Buy Me A Coffee members, okay? So, looking on screen here, we have these large beam profiles acting as columns because the, 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 the strong axis is, is suitable for the portal frame, okay? And you can see here, up at the ground floor, we actually need to encase these, okay? So, um, there's a couple of ways you could go about doing this. You could, if you wished, go to something like, um, if I go to my sheets there, for example, and I go to my structural foundations, We could go through the process where I would go CL, and you can see at the moment we don't have a structural column, uh, a concrete column place. So what I want to do is I want to say load family, okay? And I want to go to structural columns, concrete, concrete rectangular, open. Now this is the UK specific um, library, so you know, you'll have to find your own one according to your location. So you can see in the top left-hand side, we have a concrete rectangular column 300 by 450. Now that's not sufficient for our needs. We need a 300 by 525. So we're going to quickly edit type. I'm going to rename. I'm going to call that 525. Sorry, apologies. And then I'm going to change that height to 525. And I'm going to press apply and OK. And now we have our concrete rectangular column in place. Okay. So what we could do if we wanted to is we could... Select the vertical column, we could say at columns, okay, for architectural columns, which won't work in this context, or we could say at grids, okay. And what I could do is I could literally click and select the grid intersections here and here, okay, press finish, and when I go to the 3D view, or 3.3, as is the shortcut key, as I, as I, uh, previously alluded to in a different video. Um, I'd recommend you go check out my custom shortcuts video and overall shortcuts video, I should say, from the eye above. But I've actually placed these encasements here. And you can see that they're, they're, they're all over the place. So I can press SA, okay? So if I select one of them, I can press SA and that will select all instances and model. And I'll set that base offset from top of concrete founds. Um, sorry, I'll just change the top offset then to ground floor first and then I'll change that base offset to zero. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the orientation, okay? Now, you can see that we have our encasement. But the problem with this method is you don't always have your primary columns directly on the grid intersections. You might have an offset value, particularly on a portal frame like this, you might have an offset value. So this method of doing it is not the best. And further to that, you'd always have to make sure that um, you're turning off your, your enable analytical on these because it can... Uh, it can interfere with any sort of model um, that you have in exchange, let's say, with robot structural analysis or tech structural designer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of them and I'm going to show you my preferred way of doing it. So when I select one of the large portal frame columns, okay, I'm going to press SA again to select all instances. And I'm going to press Control C to copy that to my clipboard. And then I'm merely going to go to my Modify tab, Paste, Align to the same place, and I'm going to get a warning saying there's duplicates. Okay, and you can see down here we're after getting the warning behind my head saying that there's duplicates and it's after flagging the orange column. Okay, and then I'm merely going to go and select the column type that I want, which is 300 by 525. Okay, and just watch what happens. It still had retained the selection of all 18 items that were duplicates. So you can see it even keeps the orientation of the columns. So you know that you're oriented not only on the central analytical line, of the um, the primary structural column, the actual steel structural column, but that you have the correct offset all around the column as well, okay? And then I'm just going to change that top level to ground level accordingly, okay? We're going to press unjoin elements because there's elements that had joined on the top, okay? And finally, I'm going to ensure that I turn off enable analytical, okay? And now you can see warts and all because this this wall obviously needs to uh the construction has to account for these um 
these encasements, but you can see now that we actually have our encasements completely in place. So following on from that, we do actually have a series of columns that are actually fully embedded within the walls. So we've got these two five four members that are fully embedded within the walls. So if I was to select that member again, I pressed SA, you will see that it'll highlight a series of those that are embedded in the walls and it's the same process. Okay, so what I can do first of all is if I press CL, I can go to my concrete column and I'm just going to give that a new size. So I'm just going to call that um, 350 by 350 for argument's sake, just to allow approximately 50 mil around. Sorry. And I'm just going to change the overall dimensions. I'm going to press OK. And again, what we can do is we can select that column, if it ever lets me. One moment. <laughs> I'm going to press SA to select all instances. And I am going to press Control c to copy to the clipboard. And then I'm going to paste a line to the same place. We're going to get our, our warning again, saying that we've got duplicates throughout. But you can see there that we still have structural columns. We have 14 selected. So there are the duplicates. So I merely change those to our 350 by 350. Turn off the enable analytical so that they're not interfering with our analysis models. And again, we've encased our, our columns accordingly. Um, so you can see how quickly this, this actually becomes. So there's our encasement there, for example. So obviously there's a bit of a neatening exercise that has to happen once you place these encasements. But a lot of people I've seen go through the process of placing the encasements manually on a um, on a column by column basis. And it really is just wasted effort. I think you should just focus on your frame, get your frame up and running. And then once your frame is up and running and you're fairly certain that your member sizes are locked down for the duration of the project, at that point, you can merely copy, paste on top of itself and change the um, column type and turn off the analytical and the overall um, extent of the, the height of the encasement. And you're done. So it's that simple, guys. Um, as ever, my name is Niall. This is 8020BIM. I hope you found this useful. Make sure to check out some of the other tutorials that we have. Um, I've got tutorials based around this model specifically. I've got tutorials based on, um, let's say, I've got an upcoming tutorial based on structural slab thickening, um, openings, slab edges, um, floor recesses, lift pits, all that kind of stuff on the on the structural floor slabs that nobody ever seems to actually give any real thought or concern to, but always arises as a query. So I'm going to do that next. Um, so make sure to like and subscribe and tune in for that. As ever, you can join the Discord down below, the community Discord, and I'd love to see you over there. Ask any questions that you have, and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I generally tend to be there for, for the most part. Um, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. I hope you're taking care of yourself, and uh, yeah, yeah. Tune in next time. See you later.